fathers are getting older. With the front of Pastor here, the boy last year, I looked at him. The hair is white. He no longer stands to preach at legal services. It's down. That the is getting close to 84 now. Baba Omar Opai will soon be 80 now. Who amongst us have built weight to withstand the devils they will stood? Through intercession, Ebola came to Nigeria and turned back. They predicted COVID will waste all of us. Who don't stay? They called me to sell a useless old man. And they forgot that the meaning of his name is when he dies, the earth will be judged. And the day Methuselah died, the flood came. There's a generation saying, the fathers, what do they know? What we have learned now? And they are rounding up. There are no people contesting for the mantles. What they are contesting for is the suit. They are living. And when you look at many of them, is that they have made up their mind. Generation is arrogant, leave them alone. And when you can get some of them to open up, they tell you, We have fears for your generation. One of the fathers in the body of Christ called me and he said, In the year 1980 something, Archbishop Benson Daosa called him. And then one day, he went to the house of Archbishop Benson Daosa. And he met Bishop David Oedepo on his knees. And that bishop was rebuking him, rebuking him. When he got in there and saw Bishop Oedepo on his knees, that bishop rebuking him, he ran back to close. That bishop said, Stay there now. In his presence, that bishop rebuked Bishop Oedepo. Then when he was done, Bishop Oedepo prostrated. I said, Thank you, sir. Then he left. And that bishop said, um, Your food is at the dining room. Go and eat. That bishop now called him. Then you see, David is going very far. Follow him. Baba said to me, He said, The same way that bishop called me then is the same way I've called you now. Go on your knees. Let me bless you. I wept. You know, the elder says that it's the child that knows how to wash well the hands that we eat with the elders. When you get to a river, you don't give water. You take. When they come before those they should learn from, they want to impress. And by God's grace, we are doing this, we are doing that now. Hear the story with me. They went to Club 59. They went to meet Daddy Jew, your father, to pray for him. Daddy Jew said, well... I can't pray for you now. When you clock 60, come back. Yeah, then I will pray for you. <laughs> they thank you, Baba. You know, to travel and see him, and he said, it was the nonsense. Just you know my schedule. When he clocked 60, he went back. Baba said, ah, celebrant. Go on your knees now. Baba said, you know the reason why I'm going to pray for you now? That because you are just about to start ministry. At 60. If I mention the name of the man I'm talking to you about, you'll be shocked. Then Baba said to him, kneel down. So he knelt down. Then all he saw was Baba's hand coming towards his head. And as Baba laid hands on him, then he passed out. Don't joke with those men. I was in a meeting where Baba Deboe said, today I'm going to lay hands on everybody. And my daddy has said I should not hold back. In that meeting, people didn't fall under anointing. They passed out. He said, when he passed out, he said, he started seeing the kind of crowd he has never seen before. Seeing all nations or seeing people coming to Christ. When some people were rounding up, some are just starting at 60. He said, for over 45 minutes, he was on the floor. And for that 45 minutes, Pastor here, Daddy Gio stood over his head. Father and son. 
And if you're a man of God whose destination is to be on flyer, there is a generation that will manage you with their insecurity. They see you are the type that you manage their ego, and that's your assignment. You just want to be on flyer. Say, post 20 flyers and you leave your immediate work. Oh, a ministry called me. Apostle, please. You know, we've been praying. This is we want to in New York, want to an American tour. You and your people, let's do some three weeks American tour from New York to Florida to Texas, and then we if I'm, even if I was pastoring two people, I know they go. Ah, opportunity! America! Ah, they go there and take pictures. Outside alignment! If you have an idea of the number of what people call opportunities, we have said, go hell with this. What people call doors. Now every country is saying, ah, Apostle Nazareth says, Ah, this is my PPA. This is my PPA. Whether you call it America or UK, I can only give you between Wednesday and Saturday to be back to base. You can't do a week with you. Doesn't if you like bring the Pope of the world. This is my PPA. People have left their primary assignment. Don't be from one altar to another. The church is not growing. Number five. People desire growth for the wrong reason of oppression. To oppress. To oppress next, like we say. Desire growth for oppression. There are many important reasons why we should desire growth and impact. Very many important reasons. There's a way a liberal thinks. There are many things that need sons. Many things. There's work. There's work to be done. What, what, what do you want to get in in the SUVs you dream about compared to the souls? There's work. The last day church, we have more work. We are dealing with the kind of demons our fathers did not deal with. We have peculiarities, serious ones. Recently, there was one BBC release documentary. I wept. I wept not. I wept because there is a generation we are already trying to get back to church. We are just convincing them. That church is a safe place. Where do we start from again now? How do we tell those who will never know that have said this is why I don't go to church? It doesn't matter the number of revival we think we have. An average paper law in Benin has more attendance than an average church. We are starting two services, from there around 20 services. And it gets filled 20 times. What we are seeing compared to what God is ready to give? Nothing compared. Hey God, I can't go into this because there are so many ministers already. Are you sure? There are many hirelings or few workers. Many hirelings. There's work to be done. I watch a video. An American church where the bishop, a male bishop, was introducing his husband. And the church clapped. Is it in this generation that a pastor's desire for America is mere to prove a point and does not mind washing plates? How many people will leave ministry immediately if just any country open up, even Liberia? Apologies to the Liberians watching, just to say we they approach. And you, you, so you now know the reason why they said they were liberal and nothing was going. Because God knows their hearts. A lot of work to be done. Pastor Paul Joe wrote online one time. He said, Our fathers, the generation before us, gave us fasting, prayer, and study of the world as a pattern for success in ministry. He said, If we give light, smoke, and screen to the next generation, God will judge us. That's why we believe that the screen here now is the secret for the growth. That if, I, if I can also get the screen and the light, If we find the God our fathers found, 
and be healed. Let me give you a word of prophecy. I see a move arising that will be the steering of the ancient well in Benin. Their sons will arise. How can those who own the river be stranded? And those who are outside have access. How? 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 How did we get there? Sorry to say, any region that there is pride, you'll see that there are very few voices in that region whose voice can penetrate nations. Very few. Sorry to say, Check the east. An average Igbo man doesn't respect anybody. You be man of God, I be man of God. And I know pride is even more serious here. Who are the fathers? What did they get? And when the fathers' hearts are disconnected from the children, there's a sign of a curse. Where are the sons of Benin? Sorry, but I just have to tell you. Where are the fathers that dug the wells of revival here? Where is the water they found? If this generation will drink it, you will find God and be healed. Uh, we honor fathers in our church every year. That's the we honor Bishop Waloke. I sat beside him. Oh God. I saw people shouting. And many things, maybe we are here to excite a generation. I watched him. I sat beside him. I watched him several times, cried and cleaned his tears. We are not prophet Allah were before he died. I went to his house to see him. He couldn't come to receive the award. He told me that you honored me. If I didn't know it was that big, I would have come. And all he could say is, everyone, we all know you. A few months from there, he died. There is a generation watching those carrying this man to live, only to idolize them when they go. A minister went online to drag me. He said, all those honoring fathers. I said, don't mind them. They are doing it for clout. I said, ah. When Elisha was following Elijah, the sons of the prophet said, do you know God was about to take him? He said, yes. When he returned, these same people were the ones that said, the spirit of Elijah. Let us rest on it. We have sunk. We have piped. We have refused to dance. What can we say that will change your mind? That will make you think right and pay the price. Not for personal aggrandizement. What can we say? We must go back to the waters the fathers found. Re the, the revival started here in Benin. And that revival traveled. Benin is a product of the revival that started in Benin. He was a mentee under Archbishop Benin. That was Benin. The likes of T.L. Osborne or Rabobo were learning. What happened to the waters the fathers found? We have scummed it and scattered with our legs and say, what's there? But I see God connecting men back to the river. Hmm. When we find the God our fathers found, they may not know much, but they did find God. They find God. <laughs> they may not know where else, but they, they found God. I pass it very, very strongly. 
that there are people God wants to jack back to life. When will happen in the next two minutes and I'm going to go back to my teaching. The state that somehow is the state of spiritual death. The space strings is solemnly. Do you mind I pray with you? I want the ushers to just keep people at their seats. No matter how serious it gets, just keep them there. Don't bring anybody out. Lift your hands while you are seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. I have my reasons for saying be seated. Because I want to make sure we can continue the meeting. Who is on the keyboard? Raise strings for me. In 30 seconds, lift your voice and say, Father, give me my fire again. This is a day that we will never forget an appointment with destiny. If I were you, I would pray like my life depends on it. Send this fire again. Send this fire again. Oh, yes. Please, those moving about, stay where you are, apart from the ushers. Send this fire again. In Jesus' mighty name, we're praying. Silence everywhere, just the strings. Father, across this place, don't hold back. Let there be a wave of revival. Revive dead altars. Revive fainting ministers. Send the fire back. Let passion be reignited. At the count of three, one, two, three. Let the fire be restored all over now. Just say where you are. The word is released already. Oh, yes. Send fire upon every cold altars. Let the spirit of prayer and supplication be restored. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Anoint your men and women afresh. Oh Lord. Anoint them afresh. Let there be a wave of your fire. Let it be impossible for anyone here to be cold again. Restore the axe head that which fell into the river. Please bring it back. Send fire again. Oh, yes. Oh yes, in Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Thank you, Lord. There's a set of people here. Um, see some prophetic worshippers. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost for that oppression let it break loose. New level of authority. New wave of power. Thank you, Lord. Send your fire again. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please, just stand by those under the anointing. Let's continue. There are many things that the devil is trying to do in this season for which sons must rise. Many gates we are contending with. In Matthew 16, Jesus said to the disciples, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There are gates. One of the very serious gates we are contending with now is the gate of Islamization. 
there's a very serious Islamization agenda going on in the UK as we speak Islam is becoming the fastest growing religion in America the number of mosques built yearly is tripled the size in Israel you have more people practicing Judaism not few practicing Christianity in Israel Saudi Arabia recently released one trillion dollars for Islamization agenda one trillion dollars you wonder why the big boxing matches are now taking place in Saudi Arabia it's an agenda some of the most prominent footballers all, all of a sudden why are they opening up now there is work the few people who are touching resources as they touch it in Christianity uh, the first people they want to drag are pastors the world is convincing us not to finance our kingdom and they are heavily financing theirs who is financing LGBT movement who are those financing them who are those giving them massive publicities many nations will not receive the aid they should receive unless they pass it as a law but the moment you touch a millionaire there are places you can go to a bible again a serious war going on if for this you want growth then you want it well there is the globalist agenda those who believe that human population is a cancer and a threat to the existence of this earth the freemasons the illuminati illuminatis those who use media to control narratives well, I don't go into this much they can tell you what to believe about your own pastor and many people don't know that media's lie. many times I stumble on things about myself online somebody has gone boldly to say unknown facts about Apostle Lazarus ah and I will open it this is a lie and recently they almost put me in trouble put my video and the president picture everywhere <laughs> Many people don't even know that there are many realities closing in on us. If you know the number of gays and lesbians in Nigeria, in power, on the pulpit, who can't wait for it to be passed into a law? Right now, Africa is the place where the highest concentration of revival is felt. And they are closing in on us bad. Closing in marching towards us bringing ideas enticement where do we go from here what will be our story in the next 10 years what will be happening maybe pastors we need license to preach certain topics they are planning it already and all somebody wants is SUV or to stay in a three-bedroom apartment. That's all you want. In all that is on ground. When the agenda of God becomes your agenda, finance can never be a problem. Work to be done. Another thing closing on us is the wave of false doctrines. Strange topics. Heretic teachings. of you have left the place of your prayer because it's no longer important when was the last time you had prayer stretch and you still do an hour you are not like this when God found you what changed what changed what changed you have replaced prayer with watching messages you will scream and shout when you watch the message but you are not praying you have replaced studying the bible with audio bible that they have edited certain truths out. Oh, we're not aware. No longer personal altars. We can't trace the last time we were alone with God. But you're always sharing. Let me share the new rev I just found. Always sharing. Many people should be in this meeting who didn't come. Because they are not sure if they will get seated in front. They will watch from home. And they forget that there's something about atmospheres. <laughs> 